Howdy neighbor, how is your garden growing? My garden, well, actually my grass, not looking so great. <laughs> we have areas that are looking very green and lush and other areas that are basically weeds and are becoming sandy holes out here. And that's not a good thing because that means weeds are making their way in. And I am not a fan of weeds because weeds are plants that I don't want there. But specifically, there are some invasive species trying to creep in. So I need to get something that's gonna be a great ground lawn alternative and you all know like I talked about last video right frog fruit is the jam so that's what I'm going to start doing today is I'm going to start working on my conversion so if you'd like to join me on the journey learn kind of my thought process for getting this going or as always if you want to hang out that's what we're going to be doing today so let's get going let me talk you through well first let's just look at the garden really quick we'll do a quick little montage looking really good overall. So that's why I need to start dealing with the grass because it does not look good and that, that that's just not okay. So let me show you what my what my thinking is how we're gonna go and propagate this frog fruit. So here's what I'm thinking. I'm gonna propagate it two different ways. One, I'm gonna take cuttings and put them directly into the ground. And two, I'm gonna take cuttings and I'm gonna put them in a container, specifically toilet paper rolls <laughs> or cut up paper towel rolls. And I'll talk you through kind of why I'm thinking of doing each one. But regardless of whichever method I'm going to do or you're gonna do, the first thing you need is cuttings. So we're gonna go up front and we're gonna go grab some frog fruit cuttings from the area that I'm eventually gonna take out. So if you're not familiar with frog fruit, frog fruit is a native ground cover to Florida and actually the south of the United States, like the entirety of the south. I don't just mean like the Alabama, Georgia's, I mean like through Texas, I think even all the way out into like the like Arizona, Nevada area too. Um, but it's, it's basically like if you took like a paintbrush and you want to just paint, paint everything from like California over to Florida, this, what would be southern part of the United States, that's its general native range. So what's good about it is, is it's very drought tolerant. And I talk a lot about this in a video, the video that came out before this. I'll link it at the end. So if you want to learn more about frog fruit, I talk a lot about there. But it's drought tolerant. But the big thing for me, as you all know, I'm into butterfly gardening. 
And this is the host plant to three different butterflies. And what I lack in the backyard is we get some butterflies, but we don't get a ton of butterflies. So I'm really excited to go and add this in the back so that we can one, kind of cover up our sandy patches, but two, bring in butterflies and pollinators into the backyard. And yeah, those are kind of the main things I want to do. So, so the big reason that I want to be able to convert my lawn really is because the grass has slowly been dying off and lawns, not grass lawns are not great for the environment, especially down here in Florida with the nitrogen and how it seeps into our waterways and causes things like red tide slash losing a lot of our aquatic native species that our wildlife feed on from our fish to our manatees and stuff like that. So I wanted to do something different other than just replace it with sod again, grass. So the lawn alternative I really wanted to focus on was frog fruit and frog fruit. You could propagate it basically two different ways. You could do it by seed or you could do it by cuttings. There are people out there who do sell it with seeds. Um, I guess the third way would be through transplants. You can go and buy little like four inch containers or containers from people. Um, like I got mine at Wilcox and I think things like little red wagon and other native nurseries carry it and you can get them in little four inch pots. And like, you may think like, Oh, but it's so tiny. I mean, that one tiny one just became this hot mess right here. This is all frog fruit from one four inch pot. So it can spread really, really well. So what I'm going to be focusing on today is not anything to do with seeds and not buying transplants, but I'm going to create my own transplants and I'm going to go take cuttings and just put them directly into the ground. And the way I'm going to create transplants is going to be through that's right, cuttings. So we're gonna do a lot with cuttings. And the reason I'm doing cuttings, I guess you could gather the seeds. Um, they're very tiny. And just from watching this area, it has started throwing seeds onto the other side, which not thrilled about. Um, but cutting is super easy. That's what Mr. Cliff and I focused on. Our biggest issue when we did our test on the side yard was that we were in monsoon season. And really we are just coming out of the drought season and we're about to start heading into rainy season. We <laughs> Look at it, it's overcast. We're actually getting rain. Actually Fort Lauderdale got like two inches, not two inches, that's not right. Fort Lauderdale just got like 24 inches, which was insane. So since we are now starting to head out of our drought season and into our rainy season, but not quite be in our rainy season yet, this is a really good time to start cuttings in ground. Now, if you're gonna do transplants, you have a much wider window. Any time from spring to summer and fall, if you live in like South Florida and South Central Florida, like your zone 10s and 11, you could push it into like fall for like getting it established. But if you're North Florida, it's gonna die back a little bit. So you don't really wanna, you know. I would only look at establishing it in like late fall winter if you live like in a zone 10 like i do um but that could even be a little like eh, maybe not but really once you kind of know your pasture freezes your pasture cold fronts but you're not in like 24 inches of rain hi fort lauderdale you doing okay so this is the time to go focus on cuttings so let me show you how to do it because you may already have frog fruit in your yard or a neighbor has it in their yard and thinks it's a weed so they might not have Think it's like such a big deal so let me let's, let's, let's go look at how the cuttings we want to grab okay so here is my mat of frog fruit and when you look at frog fruit let me find one that's already going naturally so here is a cutting of frog fruit i just grabbed a random one and you can see this was not the roots i pulled this is actually anywhere there's these little nodes they can start to re-root on them so what we want to do is we want to get some pieces that are big enough. We aren't going to be interested in the flowers though. We can throw them down because they might have seeds in them. So I'll add those to my bin. But I would recommend if you can get like a six inch to a foot, that way you get as many nodes as possible. Cause what we're going to want to do is try to get two of these nodes at least per cutting into ground just to increase our odds you want to get three that's even better but two to three is best so that we can just get the plant establishing roots so what i'm thinking if you look online you'll find that like they say like one plant can cover like one 20 foot square area which is basically like four by five area which eventually yes um obviously this one plant has taken up probably 100 square feet easily probably more, maybe 200 square feet, honestly, looking at it. So how many cuttings would I need for an in-ground area? I mean, if I was replacing my whole yard, we'd want a lot more, but what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to really focus on the sandy bear area because there are weeds getting in there. And that's the area I really want to focus on, like getting it to take off quickly. 
So I'm thinking what we'll do is we'll do about, I don't know, maybe 20 cuttings because it's about a 20 square foot area that I want to focus on and that's it. So it's going to be like one little cutting per square foot. And then we're going to grab an additional six cuttings to put in to make to create our new transplants. So that's what I'm going to do right now. So let's go, let's do that. Let's see. Got one, two. So I'm grabbing some more like well-established cuttings that are like thicker. And I'm also grabbing like newer stems that are greener. We're going to try it all. Why not? I'm honestly very excited to do this. I have been wanting to convert our yard to frog fruit probably for like three years now. <laughs> I've been talking to Ben about it for a long, 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 long time. And he's been on board. It's just been more about like, how are we going to do it? When are we going to do it? What does it take to take care of it? I've lost count of how many cuttings I've grabbed so far. But that's been like our thought process. And I wanted to test it but first because like you can see stuff online, but frog fruit, because it has such a wide native range, right? We're talking about the subtropics of Florida. You're talking about, you know, desert type areas. Like not that it's native to desert areas, but you have people using it in desert areas. And a plant's not gonna necessarily act the same way in a desert area as it is in a subtropical climate. So I really wanted to see how it worked in my yard before, you know, we kind of doubled down on, on it. Oh, this is a good one. See, I like looking for little cuttings that are like this, because you can kind of see there's like a little bit of roots already starting out of the node. They do that when they start touching ground. But that's just gonna give us like odds that like better start. And the good thing is, is the ones I'm gonna do in ground, we've got rainstorms starting to pick up, so, that should keep the ground a little bit moister than it normally was, even though we still have sprinklers and we run our sprinklers. Um, and that's the thing, like even when you're dealing with native plants that are drought tolerant, like in the beginning, you gotta get them like, get those roots going. Otherwise you're gonna sit there and be like, oh, my drought tolerant plant dried up and died from no water. So that's like a bummer, right? For all that work, money potentially, and then all of a sudden you lose it all just because you didn't water enough. So you always gotta water it in the beginning just to get it going. It's kind of like how native plants function is they can survive drought, but usually they, their little seedlings take off in the wet season when there's lots of resources available so that they can like get roots really well established. Because like anything that's drought tolerant usually means it needs less water. But two, what it usually means if it's something more like lush and green is they've got really deep roots so that they can reach deep into the ground. And also they can hold it without like evaporation sucking all the water out because that's like a big thing right it's like plants that like have like little rinky dinky root systems the water just evaporates eventually out of the soil or the plants suck it up but the ones that are like these native plants like some of them like sunshine mimosa right back there those like pink powder puffs they have six foot tap roots not tap roots that's incorrect they have six foot roots so they go way down into the ground. So they are making sure they can go the distance. Oh, I lost about count cuttings because we were chatting. So let me count those right now. Three, four, 16. All right, I won't, I won't talk. This is like a fun one. We got like a bunch of potential node areas, right? One, two, three, four. What was that, 17? Mm -hmm. Okay. Have we switched to no trouble? Ah, well, I wonder if we're going to get rained on. Well, there's Mr. Cliffs of my project. You can see this is how it looks about mm, nine months since we did this project and we thought it died. But you know, I see like this whole. Oh, sorry. Let me show you without holding this. But you can kind of see behind me, like this whole mat right here, that's all frog fruit. So it is starting to fill in and this area gets mowed versus the other area that I was taking the cuttings from doesn't. So I'm really curious to see, and I'll of course update you guys, you know I will, um, what it's going to look like in probably another six months because we've gone through the rainy season again. 
And that will also allow this to start spreading even more beyond, like, as you can see, we still have like a dirt patch right here. And then we'll see kind of how it goes. And then also how it competes with the grass back here. And I'm curious, like, have any of you guys converted your lawns to frog fruit or any other lawn alternative? And like, what did it look like? What was your favorite parts? What do you not like about it? Because I feel like that's the important part is like a lot of people can be like, boo, grass. But if we don't like help them understand, like when you do change it, like what are the things that are better? But like also what are the things that are worse? Because what we would hate to do is have someone rip out their lawn, put something in and then feel like boo native plants. Like maybe, maybe the grass is okay for them and they just do other native plants, you know? Like that's why I like trying to take you guys along for the journey is because like, I want you to have like informed decisions, right? Like I don't want to just be like, oh, it's better for the environment. Like just do it without being like, yeah, I mean, this is good. This is bad. This is okay. So, and I'm not a hundred percent committed to just doing frog fruit. For me, like I'm thinking about actually doing kind of a mix because, you know, frog fruit will do okay in shady areas, but like creeping sage will do better. Or there's some like areas like um, where the stormwater drains empty out. And I have been thinking about using that brown savory that I use up front, which is a semi, it's not an aquatic plant, but like it grows along like water edges normally in its native range. Um, but someone else was mentioning like water hyssop, which there's a native water hyssop. And um, also for like kind of near like the storm gutters. And like, I think that's a really good idea. Cause so for me, it doesn't have, like I want it to be still be kind of like a green mat, but like it doesn't have to all be the same plant, if that makes sense. So I'm thinking more kind of a mix of native plants for a long alternative with the main thing being frog fruit, I think. But I could always come back and tell you, be like, boo, I don't like it. <laughs> well, you'll know, but I think I'll like it. I'm gonna go with I like it. From what looking at most people's yards, it looks good. So first up, we're gonna go take our cuttings and put them in the ground. It's not really that complicated. It's literally what you think it is, or maybe it's not, so I'll show you. But if you are, like, it's not, don't overthink this one. It's not, it's not complicated. So what we're gonna be doing is we're basically gonna, here, I'll, let's go over the grassy area. Okay, so you can see we have a, <laughs> Classic looking Florida soil. It's very sandy, not looking cute. And we have some weeds moving in like this is um, invasive shrimp plant, green shrimp, not the shrimp plant that you buy at the store, but this is green shrimp, um, which is an invasive species. So I do want to get this down. There are a couple natives have moved in like cud, cud grass. I don't know, but it's over there, which I don't really mind. It doesn't really matter to me. Um, and it's a native well, it's a okay, it does matter to me because it is the host plant of the Painted Lady. And I also left in uh, Pelatory Floridana, which is the host plant of the Red Admiral. And I've been seeing more Red Admirals. So I'd like to keep stuff like that, but I would really like the other bad stuff to kind of go away. So we will take these. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take little plants like this. And some of them have little, you know, rooty roots starting. That's like best. And others that don't, but they can develop them. So what Mr. Cliff and I did in our project between our houses is that we basically took like it so that two of these nodes would be underground and then we would leave a little bit of the leaves. You don't want any of the leaves to be underground because they're just going to rot. And yeah, that could be fertilizer in the long run, but it'll probably distress the weeds um, before it gets established. So we're just going to take it and we're just going to kind of just draw a little line. And that's it. That's it. Now we're going to do that a bunch more times. I'll take you closer so you can see that. Okay, here's our plant with our root on it. Take the leaves off. Anything extra, we'll leave that little bit. And then that. Goes in there. Take these off. I'm actually going to take all these extra leaves off. Just pinch them off. And everywhere there used to be a leaf could potentially, from coming out of there, will be where the roots potentially establish. So we'll take this and we got one, two, three, four, five nodes. And we're going to take it and we're going to just put it
Okay, we're done putting them in the ground. Now I over planted what you probably need to do for your area. Like I said, one plant per square foot should be able to fill in 20 square feet, no problem. But Miss Shiloh runs through here. We walk through here a lot. So the odds are some of these plants are gonna not make it just from us walking on them before they're established. So I just wanted to put extra in to increase the odds. And it's not like I don't have like a lot of it. So I have more to spare. But I just wanted to give you guys kind of an idea of why I'm doing what I'm doing because you may not need to do that if you don't have Miss Shiloh running like a speed demon through your yard. There's Miss Shiloh. Oh, I love you. I do, I do. Okay. I love you, but not the whole time. All right. So what I'm going to be doing is instead of doing them in plastic pots, which the original one that I bought was in a plastic pot. So I'm not like saying they won't work. What I do want to test out is basically, can it take off a little bit faster than if it's in a plastic pot? Because native plants have put out, especially things like frog fruit, how can have pretty prolific root systems. So the more we agitate them when we put them ground, they kind of have to like course correct the roots before they start putting energy into like really regrowing and then like spreading. And I want it to spread faster, not slower, because <laughs> Shiloh will tear it up pretty good um, with her speed demon runs. And the other thing is, is that I want to be able to see this year. I really want to see, I want to see, I want to see it in my own yard. I've seen it in other people's yards, how it can look and how it can act. But I want to see with like my dog, who may be more similar to your dogs, with my kids running on it, with me walking back and forth to the vegetable garden. Like what, is, what, what, what does it do? So we'll see. So I'm going to use these little cardboard tubies. These are just toilet paper rolls that I hang on to, or some of them may be paper towel rolls that I cut up into pieces just so I could have these. So what I'm going to do is we're going to fill this with just some standard, you know, this kind of, this kind of soil. I'm just going to use that. I'm not saying other stuff can't work. I'm just saying that's what I got on hand. So that's what I'm going to be using for this project. And I always like to keep it simple when I'm starting. So that doesn't want to do. Because when it comes to soil, what we do know about frog fruit is it does grow naturally in pretty sandy soil here in Florida. And it obviously makes it through a bunch of different types of soils throughout the south region of the United States. So I figure potty soil is probably fine. It's not the best soil in the world, but then again, I don't think frog fruit wants the best soil in the world. What I did is I just added some water to some of my potting mix soil. And really the thing is, is that we just always know with potting soil is it's hydrophobic. It has zero moisture in it. And that makes sense because they don't want like mold and fungus and whatever to grow inside the plastic bag. But what it does mean is that getting the soil to accept water initially takes a minute. So I didn't want to put them in this and then like have soggy cardboard. So what I just did is I put it in and then <laughs> This is just my drinking water <laughs> I just poured in because I had it handy. And you know me, I'm all about just like, what do you got on hand? Don't overthink it. Now with a, <laughs> like what are we doing? So what we're going to do is we're just going to take our little paper towel roll and we are going to fold it and fold it and ah, fold it. And the big thing is we just don't want the soil to fall out. This is not like meant to be the best holder since the beginning of time. These are going to stay in a little container like this, just so I can move them around to like sunny spots, but also move them inside once it starts dumping rain this weekend. And I think I did that good enough. Kind of. So we got ourselves now a shorter tube and we're just going to take it and we're going to fill it with dirt. And if you don't want to get your hands dirty, you know, feel free to wear gloves. I already got dirt on my hands, so I really don't care. And I'm really used to just getting my hands dirty. And yep, it's soggy. And now it's already making my hands soggy. Super. Okay, so what I'm going to do, just like before, is we're going to take one of our cuttings. Wow, this is huge. I was very optimistic. I chose ones that apparently I had pruned back the frog fruit. So 
you can see it, it developed a lot of nodes really close to each other. So I figured it'd be really fun to use for our, our transplants because I really, 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 really want them to do good. And you can see we've already got some root on that one, so that's exciting. And I'm actually gonna just, because I don't want all this length, I'm just gonna just pinch off that section. And now what I'm going to do is I am going to stick my soggy, put my little root down in here. I'm gonna get it down as far as I can. Just stick it in. And what I had done is I had left a bunch of space still. So now we can just top it off, center it so it looks pretty. If it wasn't centered, it just wouldn't look as attractive. And that's the most important thing. All right, and there we go. We got a little, little soggy pot of fun. Ah! So one down and we got six to go. All this extra, I'm just going to throw down here because whoopsies, if it takes off, it's not a big deal. Now, if you don't want it to take it off in the area that you're prepping, then make sure you don't let any of the little bits fall on the ground because there is a possibility that it would reroot. And that's one of the ways people actually get it in their yard accidentally is um, through lawn equipment. Little bits get on blades or little seeds get on blades. And then boom, now you got frog fruit in your yard, whether you wanted it or not. That's how I got another weed in my yard recently. So that's how a lot of people do get it in their garden. It's usually through like the landscaping companies, just accidentally spreading it, which is one of the cons of having a landscaping company is once one yard that they service has something, then all the yards will tend to have it because they can move seeds and roots and all sorts of goodies all around without even meaning to. So, but con, pro, pro, you don't have to mow your lawn. So, you know, you pick your battles. You, that's, a, what, that's everything in life, right? Some things will be better, some things will be worse. I think the biggest thing is you gotta figure out what you wanna deal with and what your priorities are. It's different, was it different strokes for different folks? Legitimately one minute later, she's running on all the new treatments. Chilo! Because she found a piece of mulch. <laughs> we love you, Chilo! Okay, let's go. Let's go inside. And that's it. There we are. We got our little starts and our little twoies. And if you're looking to learn more about frog fruit and want to see the original project as it went in, go check out this video here, or you can see the update right here. And if you enjoy hanging out, make sure you go ahead and like and subscribe. Make sure you don't miss any videos. Okay, I'll see you soon. Bye.